There we go. Hi. Hey, everybody. Hi, it's Becky from Power Tools with Thread, and you are in our Stitchuation Room. That's a Monday through Friday virtual stitching retreat where we just hang out here and do whatever uh, suits us. So I hope you use this hour to maybe do a little tidying, maybe a little handwork, or tackle that UFO that has been nagging at you for a while to get it finished. I continue to work on... Hey, everybody. It's so good to see you guys here in the chat. It's nice. I had a little issue with audio this morning, so we just started over when I saw all the comments. You guys are awesome. <laughs> My sound guy just hasn't come into work yet. Okay. Yesterday, I told y'all when we got, um, got out of here, I was going to spend 20 minutes. I sat on the watch lady. I can't say her name because all y'all's devices will just kick off. But I spent a little time working on the blue chicken. So I have three more pieces to do. And that is um, the comb and her feet and the beak. So very cool. I will finish that up today and probably start another one. So that's good to get all that taken care of on that one bird. And I figured I would use today uh, to... Who knows a good hack for keeping thread out of the wheels of your rolling chairs? <laughs> it's called a robot vacuum. <laughs> that or a broom. Yeah. Somebody told me they use uh, a Swiffer. This is what Karen was asking. Somebody told me they use a Swiffer. You know, the kind you're, it's the little pad you put on. And on your, for your tile floors, but use that on your carpet and it picks up thread really good. I heard that. I read that somewhere. Was that here yesterday? I can't remember. Maybe it was in a comment. I can't remember. You got rollerblade wheels for the chair. You know, I had those on um, a chair that made that thing so, it moved so easy. It was dangerous. Uh, so I decided I'm not, I got rid of that. Mm. Thank you, Jane. We have a virtual kitchen like you do at any retreat. And Jane says there are cranberry orange muffins ready. Yay. They smell delicious. All of this has no fat, no calories. And, uh, Anyway, I, I no, you you guys are doing fine. Your comments are coming up late. It was the audio on my fault, on my, my side, my fault. So today I thought I would go ahead and finish up doing, uh, I've got two blocks left for the Kimberbell mini quilt. And I thought I would do that this morning. This is Darla, my brother Luminaire, XP3. She started as an XP1 and has had both of the upgrades. So, Yeah. Just let the thread build up and your chair will not roll fast. There's there's a thought, Cindy. Yeah. <laughs> there's a reason I am on uh, those. Uh, what's that? That It's not wood. It's whatever it is. No carpet in this room if I can avoid it. I had to have carpet in here for our three-legged dog because she freaked out on tile. But um, she's not with us anymore. So, uh that next day, all the carpet, except for the, the mat, when you walk in the door, all of it's gone. I roll around stuff like crate, laminate flooring. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Brain's not firing on all cylinders yet. Oh, you guys, yesterday I had my class with Paula Joe from Cedar Quilts. It's S-E-D-E-R uh, quilts, Cedar Quilts. And um, she was wonderful. Oh, we had now halfway through the class, the sheriff came to the door, had three deputies standing in my driveway. Apparently there was an incident up the road somewhere. I've got cameras all over my house and they wanted to know if I'd captured anything, which I had not. But um, anyway, uh, it was really nice. Um, her visit was great. And she was so gracious because I told her, you know, the sheriff's here. I got to go. And then so we stopped the lesson and then picked it up later on. She was very generous with her time. 
she's a pro stitcher educator. So if you need like assistance, uh, maybe you just got the pro stitcher, you're not savvy with it yet, or you are doing something and something went wrong and you find yourself in a fix. She, you can go to her website, cedarquilts.com and you can set up an appointment with her like right away, usually, and she'll respond to you and get you uh, up and running again. And she's very, very reasonable on her rates. So uh, she's, thank you. I, what, <laughs> yeah, if she's here. So Wendy Peterson says she loves her videos. Um, I don't know. She's on mountain time. So she may or may not be watching this early, but um, we had a great visit yesterday. So I really want, I just can learn from her, you know, and some, everybody has their own style of how they learn. And um, it just depends on the instructor. So I was, I've, I've watched her for years. And even when I didn't have pro stitcher, she taught me how to long arm because the concepts are all the same on long arming, no matter whether you've got the little bitty one or you have a big one or whatever machine you have, but you know, how to load a quilt, how to fix an oopsie, which happens to everybody. Uh, your backing's not long enough. I mean, whatever, you know, she goes through that and that's really nice. But, um, oh, she is here. We did have fun yesterday. Hi, Paula Joe. Thank you for watching. So check out cedarquilts.com. We did have fun yesterday. I really, really enjoyed the visit. And uh, so, and it was great because what, the way it worked. So I've got her, my earbuds in my ears. She's talking to me. And as she talks to me, I've got my iPad up and I've got the microphone on my iPad and I'm repeating what she's saying to me and my iPad's taking notes. <laughs> so that was kind of cool. And it allowed me to write my notes real time. And so she was good. She'd say something and then pause, let me repeat it in my brain. And she confirmed, yes, that's right. Because, you know, it comes in and you have to process it the way you process it. And then you have to write it down. So everybody's notes would be different, you know, depending on the, if you're taking a class or whatever. So yeah, um, it, she's really, really good to work with. If you get stuck with pro stitcher, she's your girl. So all righty. Um, yeah, I wanted to show you guys too. So yesterday we were talking about the, I was redoing the hanging solution on my, my little quilted skinnies, that book. And I've got it linked below. I've got it linked for a couple of places is say it with quilted skinnies. And there it is right there on the front. There's the one I made. So this is a wonderful little applique book. It's perfect for my snapplique method, which is what I used to make that one. I'll show you guys. I took a picture of it this morning with my iPad. Uh, let's see. Oh, I just got your text, Paula Joe. Let me open this up. There we go. I still have not mastered the iPad, you guys. Let me get my photos. And... Um, not right now. Go away. Here it is. There. So now it's hanging nice and pretty. It's not drooping in the middle anymore. And I was able to um, just slide the original dowel right back through all three of those little triangles. And it just turned out adorable. So there's, there's my laundry room. Yeah. Or the wall in my laundry room. It's raining. I was worried we were not going to be able to work on Darla this morning because there were just thunderstorms right here, but the thunderstorm part of it has moved off northeast of me. But um, yeah, it's it's a nice little wall hanging and that quilted skinny is really nice and I have got thread on me. <laughs> Occupational hazard. But there's such neat, well, here it is right here. That's the you know, it's, it's got neat little patterns in it. So this is a cute one. Look at that. Isn't that adorable? That's adorable. So yeah. Anyway, so I wanted to show you guys that. And I've got a link below to this book. It's getting hard to find because I've been showing it 
over the past year or so, and they always kind of sell out. So I've got a couple of uh, links to it. Uh, one for Soul Machines Plus and one for Etsy, I think. Okay. And then I am so happy to let you guys know I have set up uh, an actual affiliate program with Amy Bradley Designs. And that is so exciting to me because um, when usually when I link to her, to, uh, her designs, it is through somebody else, you know, and there's a middleman or whatever, but they have set that up. And uh, Ashley was very sweet about it. So we're going to be making... In May, we're going to be making, if you, if you haven't been here for a minute, this uh, Happy Halloween quilt. I'm going to be teaching on Sew and Sale 14 in May. So starting May 8th through like the 19th, I'm going to be releasing a pre-recorded block a day using my Snaplique method. So if you've always wanted to use your scan and cut, your fancy smanchy machine, which you don't have to have, but uh, put all of those bells and whistles together. You have uh, spent a lot of money on this stuff and you're anxious to get started and get the scan and cut out of the box. And we'll go through it baby step by baby step for uh, the first one we're going to do here is Mr. Ghost. This guy right here. Super, super, super cute. If you are not inclined to make the happy Halloween quilt, and I've got links below in the description box for the quilt, it actually links to a blog post, gives you the quilt, the pattern, the, there's a link to a kit, to a fabric kit that's sold out. They're working on getting more and all of that. So I don't even have my fabric yet. So that's going to ship in a couple weeks. If you're not inclined to make the happy Halloween quilt, we have Merry Christmas. And this is also an Amy Bradley design. And I will be making this one probably in August. Okay. But you can certainly get this pattern now and work on it right along with doing this, okay? Because the concept and the process is going to be exactly the same. It's pretty much the same, pretty much the same quilt, okay? Uh, the blocks might be a different size. I don't know. I don't see cornerstones on this one. But it's all applique. And these are just the super, super cute. So... This is going to be a lot of fun. Okie dokie. So now on my blog, powertoolswiththread.com, let me show you guys just if you're new, because we've got lots of folks here. Let me open up my blog so I can show you all what I am talking about and where to go to find these things. Um, I work with a lot of vendors in the industry to um, bring you guys Good quality stuff. I don't like working with fly-by-night folks, okay? So let me um, show you. A Amazon accepted. <laughs> but let me go up here. Yeah, there's my blog right there. So on my blog, we've got home. We have shop PTWT. That's Power Tools with Thread. PTWT links. And then here's our store site where you can get your seam rippers and that type of thing. And then here's my calendar to tell you what's going on in my life. But shop PTWT links. And uh, here is where you can start shopping. And we have added Amy Bradley designs. So that's very, very cool. When you click this, it will just take you right to uh, the website. So there it is. And that's awesome. And then you can just uh, get all the patterns. I did that because a lady told me yesterday she got um, rippity doo dah. Where did that go? There it is right there. Oh, it's switched from there it is. Oh, every time I see it, it jumps. <laughs> That's cute. So anyway, I just want to let you guys know about that. That's uh, very neat. And then if you uh, come down here and you want to shop for your Yazzie bags, you'll get 10% off with a coupon code and same for sew tights. Hey, sew tights. A lot of you got the magnetic cutting system that Sew Tights has, and they've got those little boosters that came with the Sew so You guys started using those on top of rulers and using them all over the place. 
Well, they just let me know that they are beginning to sell those separately now because you wanted more than what came in the, uh, the ruler kit. So that's very cool. So anyway, let me stop showing. So in, uh, anyway, so very, very neat stuff going on. So today is a busy day for me. I have mammogram at nine o'clock. Uh, I've got to go into town and then I have occupational therapy from a thumb at, uh, I had a dog bite on, um, February 29th, ended up in the hospital for four days. So I have, a, and I had to have surgery on it. So I've got OT at 11 up on the North side of San Antonio. Don't want to go up there. I thought it was going to be here in my little town, but no, they only have PT in my little town, not OT. It's always something. So got to do that. And then I'm going to make my way down to McQueenie, Texas, over to Fiberworks and head over to the retreat center and uh, go see Harriet. She is a pro stitcher educator and she is having a class over there. So I'm going to try to make it in there during their lunch hour. Hopefully I can. If not, I, I'll just wave in the back. So, all right. Yes, I, well, Karen, I don't have a choice. You know, she says, good for me for taking care of myself. Yes, ladies, if you haven't had a mammogram in a year, please set that up, okay? You know, and m my friend Molly that I just lost, um, she just passed from a cancer that wasn't breast cancer, but it was a cancer that was um, in the fluid surrounding in the breast area, something like that. They would have seen that. They saw it on a regular x-ray. So they definitely would have seen it on a mammogram. And she had not had a mammogram since 2017. So she thought she had bronchitis because she had so much pressure in her chest. She couldn't breathe very well. And she put it off and put it off and put it finally went to the doctor and they said, no, it's it. First of all, it was, then it was pneumonia. And then it, they were like, no, you've got something else. And it was the fluid, the cancer fluid, you know, or the fluid had become so sick and it had morphed into something that was, but that would have been, we don't know. We don't know, but you never know. So go get checked. If you have not, please take care of yourself. Yep. Avi said she was going to stop them, but she went ahead and did one and something was found. So yes, definitely get yourself checked. You practice by taking um, the, re the refrigerator door, okay, and hold yourself up and give it a good squish. <laughs> <laughs> there was a far side cartoon or some kind of cartoon that was exactly that. Must be. 25 years ago, 30 years ago, something. I saw it and I laughed so hard. And then um, it just stuck with me. And the, yeah, th what it is, is the husband's looking at the wife and he says, are you ready for your mammogram today or whatever? And, but her boob was like pressed out and sticking out flat like this. And he says, what happened? Or, and she says, well, I, I practiced for my mammogram by slamming my boob in the refrigerator door. <laughs> oh, we got some Frito time. There she is. Hi, baby. Is daddy outside? He didn't want to come in. You decided to come in and not be in the rain, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, leave the fridge door open so it gets cold as well. No updates on Sunny yet, Julianne. Um, she's still admitted. So uh, I thought that was funny. But then I was wandering around uh, Portsmouth Naval Medical Center, and they had that cartoon. That page was taped to the outside of the glass on the coffee bar in the common area in the middle of the hospital. I thought that was so funny. I hadn't seen it in years. year. It's a smash gram around here. I like that. Laura, that's hilarious. <laughs> Gotta go for my smash and grab. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. I love it. Oh, good, Debbie. Congratulations. She said her memo came back normal. That's great. Yeah, um, you know, it's a necessary evil. 
whatever. So it's, it's because it's always good to know ahead of time, right? Catch it early. If it's, if it's going to be there, catch it early. I'm not getting any, your annual boob squash. That's funny. You guys are funny. Sunny, if you're watching, oh, lots of prayers. Yeah. I need a flat surface so I can hoop my, my stabilizer on this thing. Oh, I got in my little six inch Axfeld wire. I got the star to hang these. I got the little star. That's cool. I guess Keith got in the house. Okay. I don't have any room. I've got stuff everywhere. I don't have any space. Let me move this. Put this in here. Move my mouse. Yeah. Okay. I just got to get this hooped. Let me turn my table so you guys can see what I'm doing. I got, I got a lot going on. And a little space. So Me Time Delivered uh, wanted to do a feature on me. That's, um, you know, those are the monthly, monthly subscriptions. We were going to get together. And for scheduling reasons, they wanted it to be the first week of April and like do a live interview type thing. But you guys, we're, um, we're not, yeah, the first full week of April. So we're just getting back from Tempe. Arizona from Mull Queens on like the 9th, 8th, 8th or 9th. I've got two days in there. One of those days is Molly's funeral. And then we take off for Vidalia, Louisiana for a, um, what are we doing? <clears throat> An RV rally. So we're going to be gone uh, and not available. And the scheduling just did not work out at all. Sorry, I guess I should have showed you what I was doing here. Okay, so I just put the bottom hoop down and cut a piece. Okay. Lay that on there. This is a two hooping block that I'm making. Oh, I didn't get the pattern. I need to go get the pattern. Ooh. I've got it on my USB stick here. And I just put this here and set that right on there like that. And I'm going to pull this out and look at that. This is a uh, designs and machine embroidery magnetic hoop. And this is for floating. And I love to float uh, my stuff. It just... It just makes my life easier. I'm not a fan of original hoops that come with the machines. So where's Keith's work in progress on the quilt he's making? Oh, okay, Lisa. So he is working on uh, Scullover from Legit Kits. And he's finished block number eight. And uh, he is sewing on a brother BQ 900, I think it is. It's, it's a standard sewing machine, no embroidery module, but BQ is the quilting. So it's got a big long quilting table beside it. Yeah. So. All right. So I'm gonna put this, uh, have you already done your thing, Darla? Yes, you have. Okay, good. So I have my background fabric here and I have it backed with some SF 101 so that it won't pucker. And then here is the fabric that the little chick goes on. Let me show you guys what I'm going to be doing. This little guy right here, this little peep right there. Oh my gosh, you guys, peeps are on the shelves at the grocery store. <laughs> I love those. Ah, you have trouble lining up the hoops when using the dime hoops, but never tried leaving the insert in. Yeah, give that a try, Nancy. Uh, what that does is it allows kind of a graceful hooping and then your stabilizer doesn't go crazy. You know, 
it, it doesn't it doesn't go nuts. So <clears throat> the thing about an embroidery machine, you guys, you do need a different bobbin. My bobbin's good. I've got um, I use you use a lighter weight bobbin. Okay, so I use dimes, pre wounds because I'm lazy. I just it's so much easier to just use these. Okay, and I use standard organ needles. These are these are S A E M B seventy five eleven needles, embroidery organ needles. Okay. I usually use a 7511 all the time, most of the time because I'm always stitching with 40 weight thread. <clears throat> and um, if you're having shredding problems with your brother or your baby lock, uh, go ahead and switch to an organ needle. It, some came with your machine, but uh, they're timed with organ needles at the factory. I use Schmetz for years and years. Uh, how often do I change my needle? Wendy, I change my needle usually when it breaks. Um, or if I had some kind of drama where maybe it's, you know, it might've got a burr on it or something like that, but, um, I don't, I don't do a whole lot. I don't change it unless, unless it needs it. Those needles are pretty good. <clears throat> I don't like having my back to y'all. Purple dot bobbin holder. Yes, yes, yes. Let me, you're, thank you for bringing that up. So let me show you. <clears throat> a brother machine i think baby lock does too the um your bobbin case will come with a colored dot on it this one's purple see the purple dot in the bottom this bobbin case is uh has a little bit tighter tension and if yours only came with one then one bobbin case. So there's a purple dot and there's a green dot. Green dot or no dot is standard for like regular bobbin thread for sewing. But the purple dot, there's a little teeny tiny. You've got two screws. You've got a Phillips right here and you've got a flathead right there. The flathead is the tension adjustment, like micro turn, micro, micro turn. But <clears throat> the high-end embroidery machines generally will come with two because your this bobbin thread is a 60 weight. It's a thinner thread, so it needs a little bit more tension so that it does correct. And now that I popped that open, I got fuzzies in there, huh? Wow. Yeah. I don't have anything to take that out with over here. I don't think. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Yeah, a little bit. Nothing bad. Anyway. I'm going to put this in here. There we go. This is a feature I love on this Luminaire. This is so stinking handy. Look at this. To get the plate off, there's a button. Isn't that nice? No, you don't have to unscrew this to get in there. You just pop it open. So nice. That is worth, oh, I love it. <laughs> okay. So that's good. Put my hoop back in here and <clears throat> I guess I'll use it says it color doesn't matter so I'm gonna use some I need white thread is what I need that back out here when I change my threads I usually do it at the I drop the tail from the other one Okay, the one I'm going to change out, put them together, twist them twice so they think that they're one, make a great big loop, and I drop the thread behind it, the tail's behind it, and then reach through that big loop. 
and that works. And then I unthread the needle and pull it through. Oh, aren't you pretty? That looks really good. Okay. So I think the first thing we're doing, oh, you know what? It wants me to use some foam. I don't know if I have any flexi foam or not. Well, you're supposed to turn off the machine when you move, remove the needle plate. It's a safety thing. Meh, it's fine. <laughs> your, your repair guy doesn't do that. <laughs> so I have a bunch of embellishments in here and whatnot. I think I have some foam somewhere or not. I think I have some extra embellishments in here, or I did. What did I do with all that? It wants me to use flexi foam. So now I've got a. I don't think I have any. This is where I got this. I got this rack at uh, IKEA. It was on wheels, and then I overloaded it, and the wheels broke. So here is a piece. Ta-da! I just keep all my embellishments in there. All of my dime, my um, grids and kits and print and stick target paper, extra spool caddies, more bobbins, hoop guards, you name it. All my dime goodies are in here. Up here I have blanks. I went through this and resorted through this the other day, or the other day, a couple months ago with you guys. So I've got aprons and towels and that kind of thing. Oh, I wanted to do one, a towel for you guys, but summer's coming. So when you're going to Sam's Club or Costco or something, and they've got those really, really nice beach towels that are inexpensive, like this is a nice one. Where did I, I think I got this in Hawaii at the BX. This one will work. Yeah. Yes. See that? Isn't that nice? You can, so we were in Maui with this on, you know, on the, so you can get a nice thick embroidery font. You use a couple layers of tearaway, paper tearaway, not sticky back, paper tearaway on the back of this. And you can just do a nice Maui or something, and it looks like one of those, uh, you know, when you go to those beach shops and they've got crappy towels, but you want a towel that's got where you were, well, you can just make one, right? And it looks like a $40 beach towel that you paid 10 bucks for, you know, at Sam's or something. So this is Island Heritage Beach Towels, paid $10.99 for it. Sharing Aloha since 1984. Yeah, nice. Locally made. I like to do that. But anyway, so yeah, this is cool. So I got one for Keith. Okay. And this is the whole point was to make a souvenir towel. That's exactly what, thank you, Janet. <laughs> yeah. And then I got one for me in pink. So very pretty, huh? Very nice. Yeah, so if, if you're going to have one, you know, somebody's going on vacation somewhere or you want to, it's just, it's a nice little souvenir towel. See, this this one has Hawaii on it for a print. Okay, so I'll put something else on there, but I'll put Maui. It doesn't matter. That's nice. I don't think I noticed that when I was buying it. I try to find one that doesn't have anything on it. I know sticky back is the bomb to do towels. I know that you, you really need the more expensive one sticky back wash away because that paper stays inside of your stitching. And I don't like, I, my repair guy tells me the two things that keep him in business are sticky back stabilizer and cheap thread. 
So I take his word of advice. I'm not putting sticky back in Darla or Spanky. Not having it. So, yeah, when you go to Australia, that's a great, yeah, Lynn, you know, if you go to Australia and buy a towel there, that's big bucks, right? All right. And then you can get these aprons at Sam's. They come in a three pack, pack, black or white. And there might be another color. I'm not sure. These are awesome. This, did I make a mess out of this one? I did. I, I'm fixing that. That was a boo-boo. So I'm fixing that. I'm tearing that out and I'll reuse it. But they've got nice pockets on the front. But they have black and white. Here's one. Here's a white one. And I've got a green one in here too. Yeah, but you get these a three pack back in the at Sam's in the kitchen area, and a three pack is like eleven dollars for three aprons. That's crazy. So it's a good twill, and a tearaway stabilizer works great. And you can make all kinds of um, all kinds of designs on it. They're they're pretty neat to do that. And then this one, I got this one from All About Blanks. And I've got a 10% off thing from All About Blanks. This is a nice apron. This one's denim. Look at that. So, you know, very nice. Be very careful. It's got those metal rivets in it. You don't want to do anything on those, but you've got a nice area up here. Okay. This one, All About Blanks. Yeah, 24 bucks. It's expensive. It's got nice buckles on it. This is a great gift. If you got a barbecue guy in your life or somebody who likes to cook, this is awesome. Yep. Pretty neat. Pretty neat. <clears throat> yes. I know Dime has great electric clipper. Betsy, I just happen to have it right here. Got it right here. There it is. My Dime electric clipper. Mr. Mann was using it on a hat that got messed up and he chewed off most of the teeth. <laughs> I got upset. <laughs> okay. You didn't come here to smell. That's just some ideas for embroidery if you want to do some. Now that I've found my foam, I can get back to what I was doing. So... This machine has a USB port in it. You guys, if you're ever buying an embroidery machine secondhand, okay, look for a USB port. If it doesn't have it, don't buy it. It's too old. What would I put on the apron? Well, Pam, like we went to a crawfish boil uh, last year, a friend of ours, when we went to EEM over there in Lafayette. And uh, I, did, I found some crawfish embroidery designs on Etsy that I really liked and put it on there. So that was cool. Um, PTWT10, I think is the coupon code. It's on my, it's on my blog. I don't get it. That's not an affiliate sale for me, but Susan's very nice and I like her and we hang out at festival and market. Oh, let me put this in here. Yeah. And if you guys ever come across an old embroidery machine that uses those cards, the big cards, don't buy it. They're, they're dinosaurs and nobody has those anymore. So be Always make sure. Um, Y'all, there's thunder outside. I hear it. Um, yeah, but always be sure to get a machine that has a standard USB port. Okay. What stabilizer do I use instead of sticky back? Angela, just regular paper tearaway, medium weight tearaway it will work fine. So the medium weight tearaway is what they used before sticky stabilizers were invented. Okay. And if you want to make sure that your machine, that your project stays on that stabilizer, like if you're floating it or something, just shoot the paper with some KK2000. This will not gum up your needle. It's designed from Sulky. It will not gum up your needle. It's great. Okay. And uh, it's, it'll work out fine. I just don't want, what happens with sticky back stabilizer is the sticky, when the needle pierces it over and over and over, 
that that needle picks up some of that sticky and it drops it into the the inside of your machine little tiny sticky fibers okay that's that's why jason told me that and he he told me he said i don't recommend using sticky on these fancy machines even your cheap machines but all right you're listening in the car margie okay don't you be watching me you be watching the road <laughs> <clears throat> so all righty so i've got my phone now and it wanted me to do a little bit of yellow fabric and i have that okay i think we're ready so i'm going to pull up my design here oh, embroidery pocket for memory usb where's that little check there she is Perfect. And set. What happened? I got the old one up there. Delete everything. Embroidery. Pocket. Oh, that's the background image. I need to get rid of that. I'm sitting here looking at the one I was working on the other day when I was showing you guys how to make this. Okay. There's that background image. And I'm like, why is that there? <laughs> Let me go into my settings and look for background image, um, background color. Uh, let's see here. Of course, it's going to be on the last page that I look at. There it is. Background image, let me hit delete, tell it okay. I had scanned. There we go. Now USB. And my check. Tell it set. All right. Excellent. Now I'm good. Let me make sure. Oh, good, Connie. You got a good deal on that scan and cut. There was a $40 discount. Excellent. You have two dinosaurs, one with a card and one with the floppy, both Vikings. Yeah, Pearl. But you know what? Those machines are workhorses. Nothing wrong with that. I just prefer the wireless and the USB. So what? why do I say that? Why do I say make sure you get one with a USB instead of, so if you find something on eBay or whatever, and it's got, or, you know, Facebook marketplace or something, and it has the skinnies book or sold out on Amazon. Sorry, Kathy, you got to be quick around this bunch. I'm telling you, it's it's like, the, you know, getting a wedding dress on those TV shows. You just got to get in there and get it and get out because, oh, man. So um, the, the problem is being able to transfer designs from your computer. So embroiderers, we download all of our designs. All of our designs are digital, just to, all of them. All of them are digital, okay? So it's either on a CD, which is digital media, or it's a U, it's a download digital media. You've got to be able to get that digital media from your computer to your machine. And if you've got those cards, okay, used to be back in the day, some embroidery machines you could only get the design from the card and you had to buy additional cards if you wanted more designs. That was a racket. I never, I never liked that. But you've got to be able to get the design onto the card. And by the card, it's a, I don't know, two by two. They're big, okay? So you've got to be able to get the design on the card. So how do you do that? If you don't have the ability to connect the card to your computer, that's where the breakdown happens. And so a computer with a USB port on it or even a slot for regular, uh, what do they call SD cards? So the Luminaire has a slot on the side for an SD card, too, I believe. Yes, it does. Standard media SD card. And that's what's in my camera I'm talking to right now. 
So if I wanted to save the designs to a media SD card, whether it's the micro and it uses an adapter or whatever, but you've got to be able to get the design from the computer to the machine. And those old cards, when they fail, not if, when they fail, they're useless. And then you can't get your designs. And if the thing that you have that transfers designs from computer to machine dies, which it will, when that happens, you're stuck. So all you can pretty much use your machine for uh, is designs that were in the machine when you bought it and fonts to do whatever. So uh, just stick away, stick away. I was watching somebody. So you love wireless because you're lazy, Heidi? Yeah, wireless is great. But if, if you're not, if your budget doesn't allow you to purchase a machine that's got wireless in it, the ability for wireless, then make sure, absolutely make sure it has the USB port in it. Okay. Don't buy one without it. Because somebody is foisting that on you. <laughs> All right. Um, so I'm ready to go. And it says... Uh, hoop stabilizer only, and then the embroidery file. Uh, no background quilting was added to the sample for part A. Right. All right. So I'm going to hit embroidery, get the, the thing loaded, and it's going to do my placement stitch for my fabric. I'm just ready to hit the green button and go. And that's for this fabric right here. So the thing with an embroidery <clears throat> embroider machine, instead of you moving the fabric, the machine's doing it for you. Okay. Here's the tack down for the fabric. So I'm going to put that on. Just make sure your, your background fabric completely covers the placement line and let it stitch that down. <clears throat> let me get out my purple thing. These are, the quilting tool is very handy if you need to hold something down because it's plastic and it's got that little flat tip on it and it smooths things out. Okay. So next is the placement line for the uh, puffy foam. And I'm using white because the instructions say they've got those little lines on the thread boxes. So it doesn't matter what color I use. Tack that down. So I'll just put the whole piece up here instead of cutting a little piece of it. I'm lazy. <laughs> I spent like two and a half hours yesterday going through digitizing the ghost on Happy Halloween. And I'm so glad. Remember I said I need the discipline to just go through it without recording at first. I learned so much about my snap with K method using a brilliant Stitch Artist 3. I learned so much about it. I really enjoyed the time to sit there. What two sizes of magnetic hoops do I recommend you start with in stitches? Okay. So I recommend, oh, sorry, wrong one. I recommend that you start First of all, buy the biggest hoop you can afford. These are an investment. They are not inexpensive, but they work great. They change your life when it comes to doing this. So my two favorite hoops, I actually have three of them. So the biggest hoop for my machine when I began was a 9x14 because that's my old Quattro. I've got that down at the coast. So I have the 9x14. And then I got Darla, my Luminaire. And it needed a 10 by 16. So then I bought that hoop, the 10 by 16. 
And really the only reason you would want a magnetic hoop is if you're going to be doing end-to-end -end quilting in your machine, like you're doing designs by Juju. When you've got to shift your quilt, you really want to be able to just pull the top of the hoop up, slide it over and drop it down and keep going. Okay. Very, very handy for that. But then this is the six by 10 and this has become my new favorite. Uh, I, you, you like, I want to use something that's small enough because it can get floppy, you know, where's my, oh, I need my quilters cut and press here. Sorry about that. I'm going to be doing this lap work. When you do lap work, you want to work on a firm, flat surface so that you don't uh, tug anything in your hoop. And God forbid you pop it open. So I'm just going to trim this away now. Betty Boop, did you put that, uh, that house in the Facebook group? I didn't see. I, I just looked at a couple of posts last night. She did a house. Man, it's amazing. A lot of work. She said the bottom part of the house was like 64 steps. Is that from Sweet Pea you were doing? I can't remember. And then when you're trimming, you want to trim, if you're right-handed, trim clockwise so that the lower blade is closest to your stitching. If you're left-handed, trim counterclockwise. You're going to get the closest, cleanest stitch. There. That looks pretty good. Okay. And I'll just clean this up. This is exactly how I work, you guys. I'm kind of fastidious about this. There. Okay. So now... I need to read my instructions. I think I'm ready. I'm ready for my yellow fabric for the peep. Let's see. This came. Will this fit? Yeah, that's a little scrap. That will fit. Okay. I need my tape. There we go. You guys can do this. This is very easy. I mean, I got instructions step by step. Y'all can do this. <laughs> With the sheriff deputies that were here, uh, they saw, you know, they're standing there and they're looking in the door and they see the lock. They're like, what are you doing there? That's cool, you know? So I gave them my card. And one of the guys was like, I'm not giving your card to my wife because that's going to cost me money. I said, oh, yeah, <laughs> it will. <laughs> Let me trim away my fabric. You saw a scan and cut 330 for 350 at Charmin's and Longview yesterday. Awesome, Candace. That's great. If you guys buy scan and cuts online, <clears throat> make sure they're different between the US and the UK. All right. So if you're buying online, you make sure, you know, so like Amazon, um, they, you go to the brother, Amazon, usually they're sold by brother, the brother store on Amazon. So that's okay. But if you see one online, you make sure that it's good for the U.S. And also you want to make sure if you're buying mats and stuff online, that you look at the code on the bottom of the mat. So if you're buying an SDX machine, you're buying a, a mat that has DX in the code down at the bottom. And not because the CM, the older CM models and the DX models, the mats are not interchangeable. So just a word of advice because that happens all the time. 
ladies come up to me at these events that I do and they tell me, I got the wrong mat and I can't return it. And y'all, that's $40. You don't want to do that, you know? Okay. There's my little peep. There it is. Looking cute. Looking cute. Okay. Let's see. Is it is it Charmin? Lost you guys for a second. That must be the internet gods telling me it is time. Our hour is up. So thank you all for spending the morning with me. It was a pleasure. And I really enjoy starting my day this way. So I hope you do too. And oh, what do we got here? You just host. Okay. Betty Boop just posted three of the house blocks. We have a private Facebook group. And uh, if you're not a member, please join. There's lots of inspiration there and support and questions answered and everything. So this has been fun. I'm going to finish up the chick and then jump over and finish my uh, chicken block. I got a lot of chickens this morning, huh? And it sounds like the rain has moved out, but uh, the quilt police. <laughs> oh my goodness. Quilt police are here. So, uh, okay. And uh, we will be back tomorrow Friday, and I usually do not a big giveaway, but a little giveaway on Friday. So you never know if you're here, you must be present. Usually just a little charm pack or a pattern or something like that. So yes, please, on your way out the door, uh, as you leave for your day, please hit the thumbs up button. It is free to you and very helpful for me. And if you haven't yet, please subscribe. We hang out here Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. Central, and we have a really good time. So this has been a lot of fun. I got stuff done, you got stuff done, and we were really productive. So I will see you tomorrow. You guys go sew something. Bye.